Hello and welcome back to Let's Develop Code Hunt. This is the third episode and I'm still in the middle of the first sector, which is the arithmetic one. Actually, uh, I'm going to re-record some of what I did before because I managed to mess up the sound settings of my new recording tool. So as you might have recognized, uh, my last upload had no sound or at least none of my speech and uh, the the upside of this uh, tool switching thing is that I'm now recording in full HD so you can uh, enjoy a little more sharpness in my videos but now uh, after I fix my sound settings you're hopefully also able to listen to what I'm just trying to tell you Fortunately, there's a feature in Cotan that allows me to reset the levels, so I will just reset the three levels I did before and replay them in this recording. Uh, this probably means that it will go a little faster than uh, it originally was, but uh, I hope you still get something out of it. I will not just type in the result, I will try to... Uh, get to the solution on a sensible way. So let's get started. Let's start with the 11th uh, task of uh, sector 1, which is this neat little puzzle with two input values x and epsilon and the default implementation says return 1 so let's generate some code examples to try to figure out what's actually going on here. So let's see, we have x and epsilon as an inputs. If we have 29 and 33, this outputs 0. If we have 97 and 96, this outputs 1. If we have 0 and 1, this outputs 0, and if, if we have 1 and 1, this outputs 1. So what I would guess from this is that if y is bigger than x, we output 0, otherwise we output 1. At least that's what I've seen here. So let's just implement that. If y bigger than x, output 0, otherwise output 1. Let's try it. So actually that does not quite work out, because now we have a test example that says 98 for x and 35 for y. And it outputs 2 and not 1. Which kind of means that... Um, the the return value probably depends on the distance between uh, y and x because I mean here the distance is pretty small here the distance is no actually that cannot be the, the case because the distance here is bigger than the distance down here Actually, there's no distance at all. But anyways, let's try to get some more some more values to to figure that all out. So in case I have an x of 98 and a y of 35 let's return to and see what more values we get here doom de doom de doom okay so for 98 and 33 we also get the 2 for 97 and 34 we also get the 2 so if the numbers are in that order of magnitude of distance, it seems to be, uh, it seems to be that we have a two. So let's say if the distance and distance is the absolute value of x minus y. 
and the distance, what's the distance here? The distance is 63. We have a distance of uh, 64 over here. So let's say if distance is smaller or is actually bigger than 60, return 2. What's going to happen in this case? Okay, now we have negative ones. And we see that for the negative ones, we also get positive results. So, negative, negative, almost the same gives one, but actually x is bigger than y. So this means I should probably use well, let's let's rewrite write this lower one in terms of the distance and say if can we actually do that let's 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 not use this absolute thing but let's say okay if distance bigger than 60 return do if distance bigger than so we, we had the in this case it would be minus one, in this case it's zero and I'm still, so if it's bigger than zero, return one, and in the latter case, in the other cases, return zero. Is this right? Now we have 64 and 62, so the dis distance is two, so, so it should return one, no, it's two negative. It's going to be minus one, isn't it? So it's minus 64 plus 62 is minus two. And this should return one, so we need the absolute thing. So let's see what's going to happen here. So, okay, actually, there's a lot of things going wrong here. So, we have 92 and 33, and this is expected 0, but I'm putting out 1. So, that's not really it. What happens in this case, it's minus 4. So, it's plus 4. Yeah, that doesn't work out. It, can, it has to be something different. And actually, since it depends on the distance, so the larger the distance between the number is, the bigger the number seems to become. I would say there's something about division here. So probably the easiest division I can think of is just dividing x by y. Because, I mean, that was, it would explain 0 by 1 is 0, 1 by 1 is 1, 97 by 33 is actually 2 in integer division because it's cut off, minus 64 divided by minus 63 is 1, and 92 divided by 33 is 0, so it will, would fulfill all these test cases, and actually <laughs> that was the correct solution. Very nice. So, and we even got all the skill coins. We even got more skill coins than we actually could have at this point, uh, because I repeated the implementation. Let's continue. So let's go on with this twelfth level, and uh, here's something new and some new information. So it tells us we have to use the modulo operator here, which actually is a kind of a tricky one. I figured out. But to get started, let's just generate some tests. So we have a model operation, and we have three input values, 0, 23, and 4, and the output 0, 2, and 1. Since we have 0, 2, and 1, I would actually guess that there's uh, modulo 3 involved. So let's just try something like x modulo 3 and save that one. And actually, that's already the correct solution. That's pretty nice. That's a pretty easy one. So let's just go on to the next one. 
the last one took me a little less than one minute, I guess. That was pretty easy. Uh, now we have another one with the model operator and actually I must confess that originally that took me really long because I really fucked it up. Uh, I forgot. I, I just couldn't see the tree for the forest and uh, I ran into the completely wrong directions. I had solutions of like 20 lines of code trying out different things but actually the solution is not that difficult. But Anyways, um, I'm going to I'm going to solve this a little quicker now. So let's see what what have we got here. So we have a model operator we have to use. We know that we have return values of one, three, zero, and two actually. So. It might well be that there's a modulo of 4 involved. So let's just try... Let's just try x modulo 4. Worked for the last time, maybe it works for this one. So, but actually, that's not the correct solution. Although Microsoft is telling me with a little too many T's that I'm getting close and have to look at line 4 which is again not that helpful because it's the only line I have so okay let's have a closer look at my input so we have uh, x of 0 re is expected to return 1 23 is expected to return 3 which I do but input of 4 is expected to return 2 uh, but my result is zero, which makes perfectly sense considering that I have uh, x model of four as my operation here. So okay, let's let's continue with the next thought. So if this is if if x modulo four is actually supposed to be two, so it could be that we just got an offset here. So maybe it's just x plus two. And now we got our model of four operation. Let's try this out. What is going to happen now? Okay, this is not it yet. So let's see. For zero, we're expected to return one. But my result is two, which is because of the offset of two I just introduced. So this offset is probably wrong. But for x of 4 we're supposed to return 2 which is kind of strange because the offset gets bigger but what I notice by now is that our expected results actually don't contain a 0 so it might well be that the function we are looking for is not calculating a module of 4 but again a module of 3 and just offsetting this the result of this calculation uh, by 1 because that would explain that would it would be 4 modulo 3 is 1 plus 1 is 2 99 modulo 3 is 0 plus 1 is 1 23 modulo 3 is 21 no is 2 plus 1 is 3 yeah that's what they got here so and 0 is of course 0 plus 1 is 1 so this could be the correct function and it turns out it is that is really nice so now we got a 45 score points and we're going to uh, the first uh, the first code thing that I did not solve myself yet. Message: Your code produced the wrong result. That is really nice. Thanks for the information. But uh, before we start, I actually have to confess that I know the solution of this one already because. Uh, since I started recording, my uh, my flatmate also started playing Code Hunt, and uh, we kind of talked about this 
this thing and I guess it would have taken me a lot of time to actually figure this one out uh, though we managed to solve it pretty quickly uh, we did not find the the correct uh, or the short version of it that fast but uh, let me let me just uh, write down and comment on how we found the solution and uh, actually show you a bug in the test generator behind this little neat game. So okay let's let's start from the beginning. Um, again we have to look for a function that kind of uses the module operator and we have one input value so it's the same setting as the two tasks before. What we see from our test results is that for input 3 we expect 1, for 10 we expect 0, for 1 we expect 0, and for 4 uh, we expect 2. So let's just do our default approach and say, okay, if x equals to 3, then we should return 1. If x equals to 10, we should return 0. And if, oh, let's sort this, if x equals to 1, we should return uh, 0. And if x equals to uh, 4, we return actually 2. Let's see what happens. Okay, new test case 23 returns 10. Okay, let's do that. If 23, return 10. Neat little thing, get some more tests out. For 99, we also return 3, return 10, so it seems like it's not increasing anymore. So maybe we just say, okay, bigger 22, return 10. Dum -de dum -de dum test generation complete. For 20, we also return 10. So maybe it's 19, our border. Let's figure it out. For 19, it's also 10, and I'm not going to waste the time anymore, since I know it's going to be, for everything bigger than 10, it's going to be 10. So, okay, we solve this one, next one. If x equals to 8, then we return 2. Let's go through this. If x equals to 9, then we return 1. If x equals to 6, we return turn a 4. For 7, we return a 3. And by now we have almost all of them. Almost all of them. So now we see for minus 8, we return 2, which is the same as for 8. So maybe we just take the... Uh, maybe we just say x x equals math apps x so it turns out this captures the function and but it's it's not really it's not really nice code i mean it's it's quite long and it turns out you can express that in a one liner but let me just elaborate on the bug in the test generator i'm i uh, mentioned earlier so what happens actually or what what does happen is that this case the lower case is not captured for the negative numbers so uh, if I say, if I change this code a little and say this is let's call it y for now, and just calculate this one, these ones on y, so on the absolute of x, 
of x. But this last one I'm actually going to uh, calculate on the original of x. So for anything lower uh, than minus 10, I will return 0 instead of x, x uh, instead of 10. Sorry. And if the same happens as happened for uh, on the PC of my flatmate, which actually just happened, uh, this is also a correct solution, which is actually not the same function. But and and it took us a while to figure this out because it is it is really strange because it makes this whole thing asymmetric. But if we take into account the, the symmetry of it, then we have okay for zero we return zero. For one we return zero, for two we return zero, which is the case down here. For three we return one, for two we re uh, for four, sorry, we return two. For 5, we return again 0. For 6, we return 4, and then it goes back for, backwards. 7, 3, 8, 2, 9, 1, 10, 0. And for everything bigger than 10, we return 10. So apparently 10 somehow plays a role in here. And there's something else I, I recognize quite early, is um, this strange... Uh, strange form of this function. So we actually have 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 4, 3, 1, uh, 2, 1, 0, 10. And since I know there's modulo involved, I was pretty sure from the beginning that the modulo is on uh, the x is on the right side of the modulo operator. And if you think about it like that, you, it's actually quite easy to come up with a solution. So we need some number modulo x, right? So apparently in the Java implementation, or at least in this one, uh, something modulo 0 is always 0, which, messes, which matches our definition, because for x0 we have to return 0. So if we assume that we need something like something modulo x, then for x0 this is going to return 0. This is nice. For x1 this is also going to return 0 because everything modulo 1 is 0 by definition. For 2, x for x equals 2 to return 0 we need an even number. So we need something uh, like to, to a multiple of 2. For uh, for it to return 1 for the number of 3, for, for x equals to 3, we need something that is a multiple of 3 plus 1. So, um, the lowest multiple of 3 plus 1, that is an even number, is actually uh, 4, but 4 cannot be it because with a 4 modulo something we would never get to the 10 and actually speaking about the 10 this is quite interesting because we, I already mentioned that 10 obviously plays a special role in here and since 10 happens to be an even number and a multiple of 3 plus 1 and actually even a multiple of 4 plus 2 it's a pretty good guess to make this 10 modulo x and actually it turns out this is the function we were looking for. So let him solve this thingy. It tells us this is the most <laughs> elegant solution already. I did not even remove the dead code. Keep trying, make it nicer. Come on, I kick this out. So this solves the exact same thing of course. And we're through this level. Uh, 14. And since this is already quite a long episode, I think I'm going to stop here and continue next time. See you there. Keep hunting. <laughs>